I'm sure all of you have lots of interesting questions. And uh, the part of it is that as I was reading up, trying to figure out what question to ask, there are so many things we could talk about that you're going to have to miss your train. Uh, so we're not going to do that. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, you know, all these people in this room are leaders. They all make decisions every morning, and they held, get held accountable for the decisions mm. uh, very soon after. And you've heralded a lot of change in the last one year, uh, lots of different things. Uh, how would you rate your decisions, and how would you think of yourself <laughs> after one year if you were if these people holding us accountable? Uh, well, the great thing about my job is everyone else rates my decisions, <laughs> so I don't have to do it myself. Um, the, uh, look, I, th I think we've, uh, I would say a couple of things. I mean, first of all, I think we've achieved a lot in the last year. I mean, particularly given that we are a coalition government, given that we didn't have a majority in the parliament, no one party had a majority in the parliament. And really, I think the last year has shown that that has not proved to be a hindrance to taking some really ambitious reforms, not just on the economy, uh, but also in public services, education reform, uh, higher education reform, you know, where I think we took some very necessary decisions to ensure it was properly funded, um, and uh, police reform, and of course health reform, which you know, we're now engaged in a uh, process of improving. Uh, but you know, these are big changes, and then some of the things I highlighted today, I did so because in amongst the big arguments, a lot of those sorts of things, which we spend quite a lot of time trying to get right and we think is quite uh, original to our government, have not, for understandable reasons, got much um, uh, attention. Uh, so look, I think we've we've... We've shown we're a, a strong government taking difficult decisions. Uh, we believe in the national interest. It's up to you lot to decide whether we've done a good job or not. Well, I think these changes are very exciting. A lot of the stuff that you've done and you're proposing are going to be very interesting things for, for all of us to watch out for. Uh, you alluded to all these people in the room. You said, you know, we want to see how these people are making an impact. What else could people in this room be doing in addition to all the things you've highlighted? Uh, to support some of these changes, some of these ideas that you brought forward? Well, I just I think if you look at uh, many of the companies represented here, many of the individuals here, you know, there, is, there is a massive opportunity when you open up uh, a sector which uh, currently accounts for around 48% of uh, national income to, uh, to the private sector to make use of the data that it produces. Uh, when you think of the amount of data produced by, uh, you know, out of a city like London, uh, the transport data, the social data, the crime data, and so on, and put that to commercial use as well to help individuals find out more about the city they live in, get the services they want, as well as the job that the government has in providing free, de you know, free information as we've done through crime mapping. I just think it's an enormous economic opportunity and I would urge people to get in there, get stuck in. I think the, the um, uh, scope for new applications, uh, uh, new uses that data is enormous. Uh, people, if you have questions, please feel free because we have uh, very few uh, scarce minutes for George. One I should have explained I'm going to a meeting of European finance ministers in uh, Brussels, so I've got to get the train. Um, not everyone is going to be there, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to make sure I am. <laughs> Do you have a question? <laughs> Tim. Thanks, Nick. Sorry, excuse me. Um, um, Mr. Osborne, Tim Lefroy from uh, the, the Advertising Association. Um, th I found that really inspirational, the, the, the package of measures um, that uh, would make the UK attractive uh, to international business leaders here. Um, and it's very true that the government's doing a, a huge amount. Do you think you've been uh, as good at actually telling people about that? and actually getting the message out, especially what you're doing for business in the UK uh, and attracting inward investment? I, I think the truth is, and for, I don't complain about it and for very understandable reasons, a lot of international attention and domestic attention has focused in Britain on our uh, public expenditure savings and uh, the decisions we're taking to reduce this 10% uh, budget deficit. And therefore, some of the other things we're doing have not received the same amount of attention. Now, that is... Uh, so I'm not complaining about that. I think that's, un that's where the political argument is. That's where the international interest is. Um, but on, on business, more generally, we are also taking a pretty aggressive approach to making the UK a more competitive place to do business, aggressive reductions in corporation tax uh, from 28% to 26% this year, down to 23% uh, by the end of this parliament. I mean, that is something that the rest <coughs> of the world is beginning to notice. Look what the UK is doing. Um, and a lot of the um, entrepreneurial tax breaks as well. Um, so uh, add into that this whole agenda, 
which, which there is a dedicated team right in the heart of 10 Downing Street. This is not peripheral to the government. Um, for those of you who know the government, you will know that the individuals involved in this are right in the, literally in the next door office to the Prime Minister. And we are tried to be, the, for, for a large uh, advanced economy, the first that really embraces the uh, governing potential, uh, the government, governance potential as well, of uh, the internet and, and the information um, opportunities that exist. Thank you, Jeff. Um, please. Yeah, thank you. My name is Fredrik Baxos. I'm from Telenor in Norway. Um, I, I agree with the previous speaker here that um, your speech was, uh, was very uh, optimistic in its uh, term on what it's going to deliver. But one question to you. Uh, when you are uh, sort of putting digital means into the government processes the way you were discussing here, uh, how do you get the string of people involved in the old processes to sort of embrace it in the same way as you, do, uh, as, as you have done as government? And is it because of the crisis that uh, you might get people to understand that it is, uh, it is a necessity to spend government funds better and to increase the efficiency there? Is, is these yeah. factors that plays in the ability to get this done? No, I think that helps. Um, I mean, for, look, first of all, government is, by its nature, has been for you know, hundreds of years, uh, probably since it's since the creation first of government, whenever it was, several thousand years ago, uh, has, is hierarchical, it is bureaucratic, um, and, uh, and it's very large. I mean, I think sometimes it's worth remembering the scale of some of the government departments in the UK, let alone you know, larger countries uh, with larger populations. Uh, so the health service employs 1.4 million people directly, and that is an enormous organization. And, um, uh, and I th you're trying to make it less hierarchical, um, trying to empower the, the, the service deliverers, the, the professionals who actually work in the public service as well as the users, is a big challenge. But I think actually the, the technology provides a powerful tool for doing that. It, for, uh, we've got, you know, it's not, you need to have the, um, the capability of the internet to allow patients to look at different hospitals and and compare different performances rather than having to go to the public library and go through a, a book. Um, so uh, I think there is an opportunity there. I think second, you're, you alluded to this. I, th I think the truth is this, that well, you know, although there is a, um, a debate about the pace of deficit reduction in the UK um, between, the, between the Labour Party and the, uh, and the coalition government, um, the truth is that uh, everyone has uh, got to understand, and I think everyone does understand, there is going to be uh, a reduction in this deficit over the next few years, and uh, and that the public services are not going to have the resources that uh, they they once did, or at least the annual increases that they once did, and so that is forcing people in the public services to think about how you deliver educational healthcare in a more efficient way or get better value for money. And when the money was pouring in with big annual increases, that was not a primary concern, understandably, because they're. They wanted, you know, they were more interested in how they were going to spend the additional money. Uh, so I think that it, there is a great focus, and that's for, forcing that thinking. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, George, I know you have to run. Thank you very much for kicking us off. Thank you very much for your inspirational words. Thank you.